Okay, so if you guys don't mind, hop into Revit for me so all of our screens look the same. So when you're at home, this is kind of what your screen looks like. Um, and you should be able to just click on architectural template right here and be good to go. Or you can go to um, new and it'll pull up this menu for you and we can find architectural. Or if you've already been working on a project, your history is typically right here. So you should be able to see it here or you can just go to open. So hopefully that's pretty straightforward. But again, today we're just doing the architectural template. Now, the reason why we want to work with this specific template is that it has some things built into it by default. And so it'll have a lot of like the wall settings that we need, a lot of the furniture that you guys will need, as well as um, just some of the page settings. So if you go into the construction or structural template, those are built for an engineer or a construction manager. So some of the menus will be different and a lot of like the built-in standard files will be different. So it's always good to start out in architectural. Um, if you go into one of the other ones for a minute, it'll kind of look exactly like mine. But then when we go in to maybe do something else, you'll see that there is like a, a pretty big difference. And so just go ahead and start out with the architectural setting. Um, <coughs> Go ahead. Um, at home, when yeah. I it wasn't any of those templates, do you have to download those kind of things? So they should have installed automatically. So if they didn't install the first time, you might have to uninstall it and reinstall it to make sure that it gets all of those files installed for you. So it's like you got a partial install, not a complete install. So you might have to try it again. Um, a lot of our computers in this lab and that lab last semester got partial installs as well. So we had to spend a couple weeks uninstalling and reinstalling too. But if it's just one computer at home, it should be pretty straightforward. So sorry about that. Okay. All right, now let's talk about this environment again. Remember I have amnesia. This is the first time we've ever seen this. So up here we have the classic Windows ribbon and the ribbon is dynamic in that whatever we're working on, this will change. Um, and we'll see that more and more throughout class, but just know that this changes quite a bit, but our default state is over here in architecture. So if you ever end up like somewhere that doesn't look familiar and you're like, whoa, wait, where did my walls go? Where is everything that was once familiar? Just go ahead and click on architecture and that should be pretty familiar to you. Now while I'm here, let me show you a couple other things. So if your screen ever ends up looking something like this, or even something like this. It just means that you accidentally clicked on this tab button right here. And so while we're in class, I like to have these expanded so we see everything because it really shows you the names of everything and how everything works. But as time goes on and you get more comfortable with the Revit environment, I don't mind if you go ahead and start minimizing stuff like this or even here, okay? By default, I like my buttons nice and big, like that. So that's where I stay. So it, if it ever looks different, go ahead and click here. Um, now one other thing, this tends to happen, especially if you're working on a laptop and you don't have quite as much real estate over here on the side, these screens might go away. And what I just closed was your pro my properties and my project browser. And it can be pretty scary the first time that happens. So I just wanna show you where those live. But if you go into your <clears throat> view tab, okay, and you guys don't have to shut those down, I just want you to see where they live. But if you click on view and come over here to the far right where it says user interface, you should be able to turn on your project browser. So there's the first one. And I'm gonna hop right back in here and there's my properties. So it brings both of those two right back. So I'm going to come back over here. So again, that lives under view and then user interface. Okay. Um, so here we go back into architecture. Um, so I think that when we first start working, this is where most of the work happens. So right here. And while you're in the screen right now, the way that you know where you are is that up here, it tells you that you are on level one. And then down here in the project browser, it also tells you that you're in level one. 
So it's really important for us to realize that when we're working in Revit, now we're working in this 3D system. And so <coughs> when we're putting in our walls, they're not just lines anymore. So for example, when we're doing hand drafting or AutoCAD, they're essentially the same thing, but one of them is just digital and you can assign more attributes to it. But they're really just lines that don't have any physical dimension to them. Whereas in Revit, when we draw a wall, there is a physical dimension and physical structure to it, even though it's in this digital form. And so we want to make sure if we use this building as our example, like we will for a little bit today, right now we're up on the third floor. And so these exterior brick walls that are right out of our window, these actually continue from the ground floor all the way up through our building. Whereas the walls within this floor, they start at you know the floor level of the third floor and then go up to the ceiling of this third level or just a little bit past. So you can tell your walls where they're coming from and where they're going to. So that'll be one of the things that we look at today. And in order to do that, it's nice to know where you are in the project browser. So if you come over here in the project browser, click on level two, and you'll see that up here, a new little tab opens up that says level two. So it isn't opening a new file for us. What this is doing is it's opening a new view for us in the same project. So now I'm gonna go to the site plan. Do you see now I have site, level two, level one. Again, all within the same project. And then if I go to elevations, let me go to east and then west. You'll see all of these different things opening. Okay. <coughs> um, while I'm in here, let me also point out to you guys, because several of you guys are working on laptops, when you start working in a project, by the time you get like sections and interior elevations and things like that, this can get a little heavy on your graphic card. And if you know that you just want to work at level one, so everybody come over and double click, or yeah, just click on level one for me. Once you have the view that you want essentially activated and selected, do you guys see this right here? It looks like four little windows and one of them is crossed out. This is close inactive windows. So if I click on this, did you see how all those other views went away? So that tends to save a little bit on your memory card and graphic card. So if you find that your computer is being a little bit slow, just close those out every once in a while and it should help. Um, one other thing that you can do if you have so many open, you can click on this um, icon right here. Its official name is Switch Windows, but it shows you everything that's open. So right now I only have one thing open, so it's not that exciting. Let me go ahead and click through lots of other views. You'll see them all populating up here. Okay. And I can do a couple things. If I know I'm done with the second level, I can just come and exit out. The project is still open because I still have all of these views active right here. Um, and then I can also, if you guys have a few open, if you hit control and tab at the same time, it lets you jump back and forth between different windows. So if you're in AutoCAD, it does the same thing. If you have like 10 files open, you can do your control tab. Um, if you're in Adobe, you can hit control and do you see that little button above the tab? That's called a tilde. So above the tab and just to the left of the one, that's called a tilde. So if you ever wanted to scroll through a lot of stuff in Photoshop or InDesign, you can do that same thing. But here in Revit, if we do control tab, it goes through all of the open files for you. Okay. And again, I can just come up here, close out all the ones I'm not using, and then it just takes me right back to level one. So this is different than just closing down the entire file. That's just closing out the different views. Um, <coughs> sorry, I, this says level one, but let me show you. Am I in the level one floor plan or the level one ceiling plan? Ceiling plan. ceiling plan, so be careful, that might trick you. I wish it said level one ceiling plan, but it doesn't. So sometimes when a few people start working in Revit, they're like, why can't I see anything? Like because you're drawing walls on the ceiling and we can't necessarily see that in that view. So I'm gonna close this out and make sure that I'm here on level one. Okay, so that was just some quick navigation how to get through the file. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the properties menu 
<coughs> maybe a little bit later in class or next week, but we will be looking at the ribbon quite a bit. Now here in level one, this is the work area that we have to work with. And all of us by default have these four little icons right here. And what these are, these are actually exterior elevation tags. And so when you start working on your floor plan, this is essentially where the cameras are pointing for us to see the east, north, south, and west views. So let me just show you real quick. If I select this view right here and hit delete, do you see how it deleted this view right here? So remember in BIM information modeling, everything is connected to each other. So it understands every view, every wall, everything's connected. So if you delete the tag here, it deletes the view on the sheet. And similarly, if you create a view of something, it will also create essentially a sheet, a, a view for you to place on the sheet later. So everything's connected in that sense. <coughs> now here in level one, we're gonna start out pretty simple today. So one of the examples that I like to start with, and this is insanely simple, but it's just enough for us to get into the program and see different ways of inputting different dimensions and how the different menus work out before we start going into a larger floor plan. So today we'll start small, and the next week when we come in, we'll go to a bigger floor plan. So the whole semester is not going to be a little gingerbread box house, but we start small so I can show you more things at once. Um, but what we're going to do today, our house will be getting slightly bigger, but by the end of class, what we're going to have is this kind of classic little house that I think <coughs> we may all not have drawn it, but I think whatever people depict children drawing houses, this is kind of what we see. So we're just going to do this simple box, not again, because we haven't done this before. Um, but today we're going to make our box a little bit bigger. We are going to go ahead and make our box 30 feet by 30 feet today. And I'm going to give you guys a little bit more information today. And then it'll kind of help you start off the project. So for example, we have a 30 foot by 30 foot box. And I've just drawn a square up there. Now if you and I were actually starting a real project, there's a couple things that we need to consider. First, is the 30 by 30 dimension an interior or an exterior dimension? That's the first thing because that makes a big difference. So did we go on site and measure it on the outside of the house or did we measure that from the inside? The other part of that is we may not have even gone and measured it at all. Maybe a client came to us and they said, we want this perfect 30 foot by 30 foot box. So draw that in for me. So there's a couple different pieces there that I want you guys to think about. When you're drawing in Revit, if you have a building that's already existing, you would draw the walls the same, but you could add different information to it so that you would know that this is an existing wall. Or if it's a new project, you would just draw it essentially as a new wall. So as the semester progresses at about the halfway point, so in summer, in like two weeks, I am going to show you guys how to phase a project so that you can distinguish between an existing wall and a new wall but we're not gonna do that quite yet. Um, the thing that we will take into consideration that ties right into a remodel. So for example, a lot of the work that I do is in commercial buildings where the walls already exist. That shell has already been permitted and I don't necessarily have to worry about the shell. So instead of going through and drawing that really specific you know, metal stud wall, whatever it is, I will just go through and tell Revit to draw a generic six inch wall. And that's all it is. It's essentially this six inch mass that has no structure to it. So if I were to cut a section through it, it just looks like a gray box. So it doesn't have that structure to it. So you can do that. When you first start working on a project, if you don't know if it's wood studs or metal studs or anything like that, you can go ahead and start it generic. And then in the future, if you want to add more information or if you're obligated to add more information, you can go ahead and do that at that time. So to start off, what I'd like to do is draw our 30 foot by 30 foot box with the interior dimension being 30 feet. And we're just gonna do it generic and we're gonna put those numbers in and then <coughs> think about the elevation as we go through as well. So here in Revit, if we want to put in a wall, 
you don't have to hit enter any, at any time. You can just type in WA. So every shortcut in Revit is a two key shortcut. So as soon as you type in two of anything, it assumes it's a command. So the shortcut for wall is WA, or you come click on this little icon right here. And as you guys can see, because we have this dynamic ribbon, our menu changed because they, all of these functions right here help us draw walls. Um, I want to talk about this menu a little bit. I swear we're going to drop today, but I just want you to know what you're looking at. So the first thing that we see is the default setting. So by default, we've got line selected, which means that when we go and draw our wall, let me just give you an example, it's going to draw a line. Or if we change it to rectangle, it'll draw the rectangle for us. Okay. Or if you wanted to draw a circle, we can draw a circular building. But again, by default, whenever you type in WA, it's going to start you off at this line setting. So you're not actually drawing a line, but you're drawing a wall in the form of a line, and it'll go ahead and populate for you. So that's the first thing. All of these buttons over here, if you guys have taken AutoCAD, <coughs> we'll get to those a little bit later, these are all of your AutoCAD functions. So you'll see offset, you'll see move, copy, rotate, all of those things live right here. Okay, so we probably won't get to most of these buttons today, but we'll get to them once we get to more complicated floor plans. For now, all I wanted you guys to know is that by default, your walls are drawn in a line, but you can change them by using these functions over here. Now moving over, right now, we, if I started drawing a wall, it would be drawing a basic wall, generic eight inches. So that's what I meant by just that solid gray wall. Now, if we pull down on here, you can see that there's also generic five inch, six inch, as well as several walls that aren't generic at all. Okay, so there's lots of things built into here. <coughs> if you guys wouldn't mind, let's go ahead and grab the generic six inch wall. Okay, so WA in case you missed that part. And then go ahead and grab your basic wall, generic six inches. And we're gonna draw this 30 foot box twice, just so you guys can kind of see what's going on. So by default up here, these are the properties of the, more properties of the wall that we're about to draw. And in fact, let me do this real quick. I'm gonna go to a 3D view. Let me just click on that. So here's my 3D, here's my level one. And if I go to view, I want to tile my windows. So I don't know, you guys don't have to do this part yet. I just want you guys to see what's happening on my screen. So I'll come back to this, but whenever you have more than one view open, if you come to your view menu, way over here on the far right, if you click on tile views, it'll let you see both windows. So it's really nice. You can actually see your building being built um, essentially in 3D, okay? Um, and I just want you guys to see what we're doing. So over here on level one, where we hopefully all are, what it's going to draw right now is an unconnected wall that's 20 feet high, and it's drawing it at the wall center line. Now, some of you guys might remember what happens here. Again, I have amnesia. I have no idea what's about to happen. So let me start drawing this 30 foot wall. And remember that Revit thinks in feet. So do you see right now it's giving me a preview, it says 25. So if I just type in three zero enter, there's my 30 foot wall right there, okay? Now I need another 30 feet, but I'm gonna zoom in. Can you guys see what's a little off about what's going to happen? That corner. That corner. And then Lindsay, question? Lindsay, do you want me to show you how to split your screen? You got it? Okay, cool. So coming back over here, so I went 30 over, and now when I go 30 down, do you see that when I work in wall center line, those walls actually overlap one another? But I don't want them to overlap. Our client told us that they want this space to be exactly 30 feet by 30 feet on the inside view. So I can leave this 30 foot wall here, and then before I draw my next wall, I'm gonna change this from wall center line to finish face interior, because I know it's 30 feet on the outside. So here's my beautiful little home right here with its one wall. 
and then I come and I grab my cursor over into this view. I was in the wrong view, sorry guys. So I come over here and see how now it's actually at the corner. Now I do 30, enter. You can see it being built in 3D. And then 30 this way and then 30 all the way back home. Oops. <coughs> Does anybody need help with any part of that? Like the WA or putting in the 30 and 30? But I'm gonna pause the lecture and record. All right, I did say that I wanted to give you guys a little note on the lecture. So while you guys are working, if you ever want to undo something, you hit the control button plus the Z button. And that's just a good thing to know because every, that's a universal thing. So for example, recording. okay, so I'm going to draw a whole bunch of walls and let's say I don't want these walls. So what I'm going to do is hit control Z and you'll see that it gets rid of every wall segment that I did. Essentially what I do, I keep my pinky down on the control key and I just keep tapping on Z until it all goes away. Now another way that you guys could do that, I'm gonna redo that crazy wall segment. Um, actually, I'm not gonna do it right now because we're gonna do it here in just a minute. So I'll, I'll save that part. <coughs> so over here in our tiny little house, um, remember when we drew this, if we all type in WA again, we should still see the same parameters. So I had a basic wall that was generic, six inches. It was unconnected at 20 feet, finished face interior, okay? Now yours might be a little bit different, that's okay, we're just getting started off. And remember, this is a project that we've just started, so things might change. Now, because you and I are starting to work in 3D, I think it's good to start thinking in 3D, because sometimes when you start working in Revit, you forget that when you're drawing this first floor plan, it's actually affecting the levels up above you, so whether it's the second, third, or fourth level, or even a couple sub-levels, like if you have one basement, two basements, whatever it might be. Um, so that's why I wanted to get into a 3D view. Now if you haven't yet, let's make sure everybody has a 3D view. So there's this little house up here in the top left corner of your screen. So let me close my view. So we can just do this over again. I just did it quickly for an example, but I think it might be helpful for you guys to see. There's a couple of you guys that didn't have it yet. So click on your house. And then when you do, you'll have two separate views. You'll have your 3D view over here and then level one over here. Now from here, view tab, and then all the way to the right, almost to the end, you'll see view, or sorry, tile views, and that'll get you your 3D view. Hopefully everybody's with me now. Um, the reason why I wanted you guys to get to this view as well is because I am going to use this little guy right here and click on the front and show you what our box looks like from the front <coughs> as well as here too. So that's the great thing about 3D. If you click on any of these things, whether it says top or the corner, you can really flip this around and see what you're creating. So it's kind of fun to do dynamically. So when you start working in Revit, remember you have to think outside of just the floor plan because there is this other elevation that we're thinking about. So this wall that we just drew here is also being drawn in elevation at the same time. So in our little house that we're drawing, I want you guys to start setting up levels almost as soon as you start a project. So typically you could do this one step back. So like start a project, set up your levels, and then start drawing. But then again, sometimes you don't necessarily, it's not that you don't have the luxury, but sometimes you just get something started and then you can come back and change it later. So what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna show you how to take the walls that you've already drawn and edit them to essentially be correct and reflect that the house that we're drawing. And then we're gonna delete all those walls and then essentially restart this whole project um, like what I would say like the correct or normal way. So we do everything from the get-go. So <coughs> to take these walls that are already um, here in our project, let's all go to our level one view. And if you're not yet, go ahead and click in your architecture tab. I was still in my view tab from showing you guys how to work. 
So while we're in level one, what we can do to edit our walls is we're gonna highlight this, any wall. Okay, you can grab any one of these four walls. And if you hit the tab key, it highlights all of the walls connected to that chain. And then after that, if you click, they're going to turn blue and it will mean that they're selected. So if that didn't work, hit escape. If it did something different, you can hit escape. Again, hover your mouse, which means just take that cursor and hover, you don't click. And then as soon as it turns blue, hit tab, and then click with your mouse, and then it'll actually really turn blue. Okay? Sarah, I'm gonna do it one more time for you. Okay? Control Z is our best friend. Um, make sure, click into level one. Oh, there, you had a little warning menu on your right side, but it's gone now. Now is it good? Okay, now you should be okay. So again, um, hover, highlight, click, then we're selected. Okay. No. <coughs> yeah. Okay, so what you want to do, well, that could just be a graphic card thing. But as long as in your elevation, are they solid blue? Yeah, so that's, that's really just a graphic card thing. Um, it could be a different setting, but as long as you know that they're selected, like I have this weird little dot right here, but as long as we know that they're selected, oh, did you see my graphic card caught up and now they're all blue? Yeah, it's okay, so it is really just a graphic card thing. So now that they're all selected, um, what I want to do is go back into uh, over, sorry, let me find it. I promise I'll get there. Oh yeah, so over here, um, I want to modify our walls and we can do it in either menu. So right now, if you guys look at your properties tab, okay, and you don't have to move it in order to see it, but if you're on a laptop, it might be closer to the bottom, depending on how you're working. But do you see that right now, the top constraint, it says unconnected, okay? And un it, the unconnected height is 20 feet. So what that means is this is a wall that's unconnected to anything above it, which is unusual because almost everything either connects to a ceiling or a roof or something, okay? So really, the only time that we have unconnected walls is if you're making some sort of a pony wall. Like if you are drawing maybe um, a reception area and there's a wall that comes up, you know, about 40 inches for like a desk or any sort of a divider wall, that's when you do a truly unconnected wall. But other than that, your wall should go somewhere. And this is what's really neat. So first, let's do this. Let's take the unconnected height and change it to um, six feet and we'll see what happens to our model. <coughs> so you just click in there, it's, I'm gonna hit backspace. So click backspace, cause it was not being nice to me. Oh, my numlock isn't on. And then I just type in six, enter. And you can see just in my elevation view that that went down quite a bit, right? The better way of doing things, I'm not even gonna change the unconnected height. I'm gonna leave it at that awkward six feet. But what I want to do is under the top constraint, let's move it up to level two. And you'll see that it automatically takes all of my walls and moves it up to level two, which is at 10 feet. The other thing that you'll notice, the unconnected height goes away because now it knows that you aren't setting the height, but level two is setting the height for your walls. So again, once you have your walls highlighted, Come up here to the properties menu and then up to level two. <coughs> Everybody got that okay? Yes, okay. Now I'm gonna hop into our three, my 3D view is essentially set up to be like an elevation um, because I have these elevation markers. And this is the great thing about this. If you've done all of your walls correctly, <coughs> Let's say you find out that level two isn't at 10 feet, but it's actually at eight feet. You can come here, and this might take a minute to find, but when you hover over here, you need to make sure that you're hovering down towards the bottom and not up here at level two. So come hover like almost exactly on the 10 feet. And then if you click a second time, it'll activate this dimension 
So you can type in eight feet enter and it'll automatically grab all of your walls that were set to go up to level two and it brings them all down. It's a lot easier than having to go and grab everything individually like we did before. You know, the hover, tab, highlight, and if there's interior walls, it would be even harder. And then once you've done it at eight feet, do it one more time and let's shoot it up to 12 feet. So again, you just type in 12, enter, because Revit thinks in feet. <coughs> And then you've got a 12 foot main story now. So far so good? Yeah, Pamela? Okay, let me pause, record. All right, friends, just a quick recap. Um, important things to know. When you guys are building your levels, remember that you need to be in an elevation view for it to work. That means that you shouldn't be in 3D and move to what looks like an elevation view because that won't work. You need to be on one of these proper elevation views that are called out here. So a couple things to check. First, make sure that east or any one of these views is highlighted under your elevations tab. And then the second thing is in your little view tab right here, also make sure that that corresponds with you know north, south, east, or west. And then as soon as you're in an elevation tab to create a new level, the shortcut is to just highlight one of your elevation lines and type in CS for create similar. And create similar will work on walls, windows, doors, even um, annotation tags. So it's a command that we use quite a bit. And you'll notice that I went from left to right because that's how it's drawing in the elevation. And then I hit escape a couple times because I don't want to keep drawing in different levels. Um, and then over here, so we've got main, second, and I am looking for the roof level. And when it says, would you like to rename corresponding views? Right now you'll notice that this is level six. I'm about to change it to roof, so as soon as I hit yes, you'll notice that it says roof right there. Now if you like that it does that, you can just go ahead and do the, um, uh, don't ask me this again and then it won't ask you again it'll just automatically rename it and then here we go 124 feet not a thousand two hundred and forty one so now we've got our level set up so again when you first start a project if this information is available to you it's best to lay this out even if it's a best guess if you don't know if it's 12 feet or 10 feet it's nice to at least create that level because you saw how easy it was to change the height of the level and everything just corresponds to it. It's much harder to go back later and try to take your walls and associate it to a level later. So this is always a good place to start. So I'm going to close out of this east view. So now I've got my 3D as well as my main level. And we are going to draw our favorite 30 foot by 30 foot box. And if you guys don't mind, I'm gonna start with Christine. And we're gonna walk through, I think I was over here. So Christine, if you wouldn't mind looking at my screen and your screen as we're going through. Um, let me, I'm gonna make it a little bit trickier. If I wanted to start drawing my 30 foot by 30 foot box on my main level, tell me how to get started and then we'll hop over to Jackie for the next step. Just preparing you guys. Good. That's the perfect first step. I'll take that for step one. So um, that was a good thing to point out. If you're in any other menu, make sure you're in the one you want to be in. So she told me to go into architecture. Jackie, what's next? Go. Yeah. I was going to say go ahead, but that doesn't make any sense. So I could click on wall or I can type in WA and it's not being nice. It's not working. Dustin, come in and help. Why isn't it working? Now remember, look at my screen. And that might be more of a hint. Jackie, let's come right back to you. Oh, no, you, or do you want me to? Yeah, I want you to. Oh, so I wasn't working in my level one, I was working in my 3D still. Perfect. So select my level one screen. Yeah, so if we just hop right back into main level, just as Jackie said before, if we type in WA at this point, we should be able to start drawing. Now, Dustin, should we start drawing right now? Um, not yet. Not yet. 
Mm -hmm, perfect. So right now, um, let me go to Sarah. Sarah, what if I started drawing walls now? How? Where's my location line? Yeah, good. So right now, by default, um, Revit will start drawing at the center line. Now there are times where you might want to work in center line, but not every time. But we want to start at finish face interior because we know that for this project, our client has asked for a 30 foot by 30 foot box with that dimension being on the inside. Okay, Celesta, I'm going to hop over to you. So now I know that when I start drawing my walls, it's going to be the finish face interior. What's something else I should think about before I start drawing? Um, the yeah, perfect. So right now, if I started drawing, actually, I'm going to hit escape and just hop over here and go into 3D. So if I come back into my wall, finish face interior, if I were to start drawing right now, can you verbally tell me what type of a wall would be drawn or how high it would be? Yep, so eight inches thick, good. And then Vince, how high would my wall be right now? It would go up to my first level. Would it go up to my first level? Peek at my screen, it's okay. It's all right if you don't know yet, but peek at my screen. 20 yep, 20 feet. So again, another default. It just usually draws your walls unconnected at 20 feet. Um, Sarah, do we want it to be unconnected? No, we want it to be at... Oh, different size. Yes, yeah, sorry, another oh, Sarah. Yeah. I was like, whoa. <laughs> You're like a puppet back there. Just move your lips and let her do the talking. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Yes, yeah, so we want it to go up to second level. Um, so up here in our menu where it says unconnected, so when you're in your wall menu, you can just change it right here. So we are drawing the exterior walls. So Sarah, should I go up to the second level or where should these walls go up to? So main, it wouldn't even leave the ground. So if you look at this little drawing, my beautiful. Huh? Yep, so these are our, our exterior walls. So they're going to start at the ground and go, I'm almost to you, to the roof. Okay, so instead of, so right now we're drawing on the main level, but our wall is going to go, let me show you up here. I'm going to Vanna White it. Sorry for you guys listening at home. So right now when we draw on the main, it's going to go past the second level and all the way up to the roof because they're our exterior walls. So these walls go all the way up and connect to the roof. Once we start drawing interior walls, then we can be a little bit more selective about what level they go up to. But for now, we're going to shoot those all the way up to the roof. And just a, a little hint, um, is there anything else we need to do, Kylie, before we start drawing? Do you, do you give me your blessing to start drawing. <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't even think about that part. Yeah, so right now, um, good. so Hajir, what type of a wall am I about to start drawing? So Celeste, you briefly mentioned it and I glazed right over it, but Hajir, what type of a wall am I about to start drawing? So I, I want to draw an exterior wall, yep. Um, let's see, Lindsay, do you see on my screen what type of a wall I'm about to start drawing? Yeah, so if you look right here, I'm about to do a basic generic 8-inch wall. Now, Bailey, I'm going to let you hold the power here. What type of a wall should I start drawing? I'll let you pick. Um, let's see. Oh, you mean which one? Yeah. Um, is this the same? Sure. Uh-huh, sure. So we'll do an exterior ephus on metal stud. Great. So we'll have a little bit more dimension to it. And then as long as all of you guys have your settings here too, you should be able to draw your 30 by 30 foot box. So just take a quick look at your screen. Make sure you're on your main level, that you have your wall going up to the roof, finish face interior, and that you have the same basic exterior wall ephus on metal stud. And if those things check off, I'm going to go ahead and start doing 30 feet enter, 30 feet enter. Yeah, 
that's how creative I was. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I just decided that each level was about 12 feet. So 11 feet to the ceiling or 10 feet to the ceiling and two feet of structure. It's a really, it's a, there are big trusses in there. Mm -hmm. Yep, 30 feet. Yeah. So um, the common thing is to start at 100. So if you get a basement, your basement isn't at negative 10. So almost every plan set that you'll see, your main level, level one, whatever, your ground level is typically at 100. And then so that way, if you have a 10 foot basement, your basement can be at 90 instead of negative 10. Um, there are some plans, and we found some last semester, but they're not in here anymore, where they actually had level one at the actual altitude of the project. So it was like 4,000, blah, 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 blah. And that, so that was in parentheses, but then 100 next to that. So you had like that, that datum point of where it actually was. And then they're saying that 4,000 whatever feet is actually our 100. Because we're not actually at 100 feet above sea level. We're at sea level for that matter. Okay, so now we, we doubled our time. So we just drew our 30 by 30 foot box correctly in 30 minutes. And we're, again, we're just going slow because there's so many things to think about when we start. And it'll be exponential. We'll start off really slow and then we'll start going faster and faster as we go through. While we're in the main level, right now if we look at our walls, it just looks like a thick wall, right? It doesn't look like much. If you want to see a little bit more detail and it doesn't slow down your computer too much, you can play with your view settings. So right underneath your view here, you've got all of these buttons. And I want to talk about a couple of them. The first one, um, it won't make a lot of sense today, but this is actually just a preview scale. So this is saying that if you are going to print at eighth inch thick, this is what your text would look like. Um, if you guys worked with annotative text in AutoCAD, essentially Revit only works in annotative text. So it automatically resizes and scales your text so that it prints correctly based on the scale that you're working on. So um, let me show you an example of how that works. So I'm going to do another DI. I'm going to do my wall faces. So hopefully now we all have the 30 foot by 30 foot box. So what this is doing right now is showing me a preview of what my annotation would look like at eighth inch scale. But if I change that, if I know I'm going to be printing this at quarter inch, do you notice what happened to my dimensions? Okay. So it's not like I went through and actually made my dimensions smaller. It's just changing the preview for me. And we'll go over this a lot more once we get to our annotation day. I just wanted to kind of show you guys how this works. Okay, so this is just an annotation preview. But right next to that, you'll see something called detail level. And if you click on it, you can go through all of the different details. So if you come over here, there's medium and fine. So you can also see that line weights are just automatically built into Revit, so you don't have to worry about line weights. It's just right there, no CTBs to worry about. Again, if you haven't taken AutoCAD, don't worry about that part of it. Um, here's one thing that I love to do. Sometimes looking at these thick lines is hard for me. So if you type in TL, it toggles back and forth between thick line and thin line. And again, this is just a preview on your screen. And you guys can decide what your eyes like, but I typically am here at course with the thin lines. And as we go through the semester, you guys can decide what's comfortable for you. So again, just a couple of view settings as we start out so you kind of know what you're taking a look at. Um, if I decided that even though Bailey wanted to have a stucco building, but we just found out from our contractor that it's not in the budget, could you guys go back and change this to a generic six inch wall for me if I asked you to? Why don't you give it a try? Mm-hmm, yep, generic six inch wall. 
until we figure out what we can afford. Okay. Yeah. You know when like people who die and try to fix the mansion? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like there's a mind to expense. Yeah, so let me show you how to fix that. So if you type in DI again, it's telling me to save my project. Thank you, Revit. Okay. I just named it sample. You could name it best day ever, whatever you'd like. <laughs> this is just a practice. Um, but when you type in DI, do you see over here, right now yours probably says wall center line? Just toggle it down to wall face. And here's one thing that's really nice. As you're going through, let's say that you need a middle dimension. Okay, this is just something extra. While you're over here, if you hit the tab button, it starts kind of cycling through everything that's close. So do you see how it goes? Wall center line, tab center. So you can do that too if you ever needed to. So instead of coming back here and selecting wall center line, use that tab. Okay. So I'm going to catch up with you guys. I asked you guys to change it to a generic six inch wall because just like reality, we run out of money faster than we think. So I hover, tab, and then click. And then over here, I grab my six inch wall and my walls have all been updated. Here's another thing that we just found out from our contractor. Let's go to our east elevation. We did our structural a little bit, let's not say wrong, but our structural engineer value engineered it and found that there are one foot trusses instead of two foot trusses that'll save us like 30% on our project and we need that saving. So we're gonna come down one foot on each level. So let's go to our second level and change that to 111. Let's go to our roof level and take that down to 123. And actually, I'm bad at math. This should be 122. I looked at it, I was like, hang on. <laughs> So far, easy fixes, right? Lindsay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here, so over here, my de this just looks like a square right now. If you go to medium, uh, or course, I don't know, I can't see it. It should, oh wait, let me try this, so quick line. Our graphic cards just might be having a hard time. So if it looks like this, you should be seeing it. Um, it was working before, but, oh wait, no, I know why it's not working now. Let me, it's because we went to a generic wall. But if I change this to even that wall, wait, we were at the EFIS before. Oh, let me go back up. That's why it looked like that. So the first, so just so you can really see how this example works, I just changed this to EFIS. But where I like to hang out is coarse, so you can see it got rid of all that detail. Do you see my screen? Okay. Is it still not doing what you want it to do? So here's, yep, so right now, if I go to medium, so Lindsay, we don't have this wall anymore. So when we go to a generic wall, there's nothing to see. So you're right. Um, let me show you guys another fun shortcut. You're good now, right? Nope. That's not a good answer. I want you to say yes. So let me just go through the whole thing from the beginning.
just to make sure I didn't lose you anywhere. I'm only keeping this wall up because this wall doesn't make a difference. It's two lines no matter what I do. So by default, this is where AutoCAD hangs out. It's the course view, okay? And the first thing I can do if I want to see more detail, I can change it to medium. Did this change at all? This didn't because it's just two lines. This changed because it's the EFIS wall. But even if I go to fine, there's not enough detail in here for that to change anymore, okay? One thing that I like to do is go to TL, which is the thin lines, and then that gets rid of how thick those walls are. It gets rid of kind of the preview of how the walls are gonna look. So if you just do TL, it's thick line, thin line, thick line, thin line, okay? But now I've got this weird random wall that shouldn't be there, right? Here's another shortcut that's great. If you do MA, it pulls up a little paintbrush and it stands for match properties. And if I click on the wall that I, so imagine it like paint. So if I wanted to paint something red, I would click on the red paint and then I kind of brush over here. Where in this case, instead of painting something red, I'm painting it to match this wall right here. Let me do that one more time. So MA, here's my paintbrush click on the item that's correct that I'm essentially taking the attributes or color from, and then I brush it onto this right here. So that's M-A. M-A, C-S, they kind of do the same thing, but not quite, okay? We'll come back to them, don't worry. So we quickly fixed our walls, we quickly fixed our heights. Um, now what I'd like to do is show you guys how to go into the walls and make them slightly more custom. And then after we do that, we'll quickly throw in windows and doors and talk more about how to make those slightly custom too. So I'm gonna come back to my main level. So hopefully you guys are here too. And click on your wall, any wall. You don't have to click on all of them, but just one of them. And what I'd like to do, let's take a look at these. And I want to make an exterior wall that's essentially just a metal stud. So see how we have brick on metal stud and CMU and then EFIS? Let's try to grab our exterior CMU, or let's, let's start with this one right here. And what we're gonna do is we're going to change this so that it might work for our project. So what I'd like you guys to do after you change one of the walls, click on edit type. Okay, yep, so you click on it, change it to the EFIS, and then we're gonna do edit type. Okay. Now, one thing you'll find in Revit is there's kind of like a pattern to how things work. And so what we're about to do with the wall would be the same thing that you do with a window, a door, even some furniture. So all of these things essentially live in what's called families, um, roofs, staircases. So you can go through and change some of the parameters. Now when you change the parameter for a wall, it's gonna be a lot different than changing the parameter for the door. But in a general sense, this is kind of the order of how we all do things. Now, I love you guys, and I know that this is a long class, but try to put your phones away. I keep looking up and people are like, I love you texting, I love you. I promise I'll give you guys a phone break. And again, I know that you guys have lives outside of this class, so there are people who are watching your children or bosses that might be texting you, so I get if you have to check your phone. But if you gaze off too long, you'll find that my feelings will be hurt and I'll miss you. <laughs> so just bear with me. It's only once a week for a few hours. I'll try to get through it as soon as I can. Um, but over here, a good rule of thumb is that whenever we edit something, we never want to override the system standard. So this was a system standard. It kind of came in the box and we want to preserve this. Dustin, do you mind shutting the door? Sorry. Thank you. So if you, we didn't want to edit or change a standard, what do you think that we should click on before we make any changes? Duplicate, good. So if I duplicate this, it's going to ask me what do you want to call it. Okay. Now with this, I'm just gonna change it to 
exterior, and instead of ephus, let's start this. I'm going to call it stucco. Ephus is the right word for it, but just so it's a little bit different, we're going to do stucco on metal stud and then click OK. And so far, the only thing that we've done is we've duplicated it and renamed it. Have we made any physical changes yet, though? Mm -mm. So what I'd like you guys to do, click on this little preview button in the bottom left-hand corner. And this actually shows us what the physical structure of the wall looks like if we were to take a section of it. So we're actually looking at it in plan view, kind of sliced. So this is our ephus. This is our wall right here. This is probably our stud and this is probably our jit board. So one thing that we could actually do, do you see how the first line here is structure? We can click on edit. Okay. This shows us how the wall is actually being built. So right now, the first thing is finish one, it's ephus, and it's three inches thick. So let's say that you know that your stucco is only an inch and a half. You can come here and type in, you know, the 1.5 enter, and it reduces that. And then we've got two inches of just an air gap, but I don't think we need more than a half inch. So inch and a half of stucco, a half inch air gap. So the next thing is basically just building paper. So it's this air filtration, so it's zero. Plywood sheathing, three quarter inch, that's just fine. And then these layers above and below, that's also just basically a building paper. And we can leave our metal stud at six inches. But if you ever needed to create a wood stud, that's when you can change. So right now everything's metal, but if you needed to do a wood stud and do it at three and a half, this is where you'd come through and change that. So just for sake of practice, let's take this down to four inches, which is really weird, very bizarre for an exterior wall. And our gypsum, Instead of doing it half, let's do five eighths. I'm going to keep this up here for just a minute. And then as soon as you have that, go ahead and click OK. And you should see your wall update. It'll be pretty subtle, but it will update. Everybody got that OK? Yeah. Am I OK to hit OK? All right, I didn't see any objections. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK, and then OK again. And it was really quick, but I don't know if you guys saw it. My wall definitely got thinner, okay? Now let me ask you guys, what's a quick shortcut, I just showed it to you, for me to take this wall and match these other three walls to it? MA. MA, good, so match. So click on the correct wall, and then paint the other two to match. Uh, let me back up. Sometimes when you do something so long, you forget. <laughs> so um, I think you can go both ways. So if you select it first and type in MA, it just knows, well, no, it didn't, sorry. So MA, click on, so imagine it like this, Janelle. You want to take this paint color and paint these the same. So you'd click on the correct one first and then click on the other three to match. So, no, no hovering. So hit escape for me. <laughs> Just type in MA. Okay, now click on the wall. And then did your paintbrush turn black? So that essentially means that you have paint on it. So now whatever you click, it's going to paint it or match it to that same style. Yep. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And then when you're done, you can just hit escape. And you should have all of your walls match. Yeah, Sarah? So I, I don't have the text here. Is there anything that says the top part? The top part. Oh, so, okay. I lost you a while ago. Yeah. Catch me sooner or later. I'm sorry, I, did, I missed it. I'm gonna show you, but then we're gonna keep going. Okay. So just stay where you are. But what you would do, you just click on the wall. So click on your top wall for me. Okay, and do you see how in your properties, 
right now yours says basic like six and twelve just come down to the wall that you'd want to do and we picked the ephus wall so it should be close to the top the exterior we started with the exterior ephus on metal stud there you go that's where we started and then you'll have to do the rest of them later okay so now we've got our walls that go all the way up from our main floor up into our second level. And what I want you guys to do now is I'm gonna turn you guys loose to put in windows and doors. Um, and remember that on my house, let me just give you guys a sketch. I'm essentially hiring you guys to do my house for me. I want the windows on one of the faces to look something like this. I know, very beautiful. So what's one thing that hopefully you recognize right off the bat? What's the difference between that window and that window? They're on different levels. Yeah, they're on different levels. So some of these windows you'll be drawing on your main level, and some of them you'll be drawing on your second level. So start on your main level, and then go to your second level. I'm just gonna let you guys play for a minute. Um, and then... Yeah, so whenever you put in these components, you're going to want to be in your floor plan view. But it is nice. I'll come back. The classroom does this. It's slightly possessed. <laughs> I'm back. Um, but you will see previews of it popping up over here. Now, have I even told you guys where windows are? No. Could you guys figure it out? Okay. Yeah. Good. Go ahead. Okay, I'm gonna have you think all the way back to the very first like three minutes of class. Nope. Do you see where I'm pointing on my screen? Do you see where I'm pointing on my screen? Nope. Okay, I'm gonna, here's my mouse. So I'm not gonna tell you. I'm just gonna hover over there to see if that works. No? Okay, so Pam, does it look like this? Okay, so keep clicking on that until you get back here. Got it? Yep. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start the lecture again. Um, as you guys were putting in windows and doors, did it seem pretty straightforward? Like if you wanted a window, you come to window. There's not a lot here, but there's some, you know, you can grab I didn't say what, but you just grab something and kind of put it in, right? And then if you want, for example, let's go back to architecture. If you want a door, you come back over here. There's a few to choose from. You throw it in. And you've got a door. Okay. Let's talk about it a little bit more. You can see it kind of populating over here too. But let's talk a little bit, <coughs> excuse me, more in detail of how to put in specific window and door sizes and where how you could actually put things in a certain place right so let's come back um i know you guys have some stuff all over the place or you know for this particular example let's take um our bottom wall right here um so which would be our south wall and that's the one that we'll use to essentially um, try to mimic what's going on. So if you already have stuff there, just delete it for now. It was just for practice. And then what we'll do, we'll come in and we'll try to actually put things in with slightly more thought. So you just click on any item and then you can hit the delete key. That's usually the easy way of doing it. Um, you could also click on an item and then you can Usually there's right click delete. Um, <coughs> nope, just on the south view. So this face right here. <laughs> okay, everybody's very sad and attached to their south view window. So we can go to the north face. Bless your hearts. I knew you would love this building. I did not know how emotionally invested you'd be already. <laughs> Thank you. So we'll start on the north side. Okay. Everybody okay with that? 
Yes, I did. But I, yes, I do love you. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to flip this view around so I can see what we're working on simultaneously. And I'm going to start with the door. And from here, I have these doors. Or if you guys ever want to see what else is out there in Revit world, do you see this little button called Load Family? So remember, all of these things, whether it's windows, doors, a lot of components come from families. And so since we're in the door category right now, essentially the only place where we can go looking is this door folder right here. So if I double click on doors, you'll see that here's some standard doors here. Or if I go into commercial, there's more doors here. Or if I go into residential, there's even more right here. And as you click on them, on the right side, you should be able to see a little preview. So Christine, earlier when you were talking about not seeing the architectural default file, you probably won't see these either. So if you just open a blank file and go to load something, there might not even be anything in here either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So when you're in your door menu, do you see in the middle of the top of your screen, there's a button called load family, the blue arrow. So click on that. And for this to work, you have to go into doors. Did I lose somebody else? So, okay. Did you lose your banner? But it does say single flush here. Okay, so um, this is a good note for everybody. This has come up a couple times. So look again at my screen because this might happen to you at home. If your screen looks like this or this, look at where my little arrow is and what I'm clicking on and just make sure you always have your big banner. Did that help, Janelle? I hope. And if it helps, you can always hit escape because you know what your architecture menu looks like. So hit escape for me and just go back into architecture. Does, does your architecture menu look like this or not quite? It does? Full tiles? Okay, so if it does, just click on door, single flush. Do you see load family? And then remember, we have to be in doors for this to work. And since I get to design this face of the house, I'm not gonna touch the rest of your stuff. I'm gonna hop into residential and I'll probably pick that first door, this exterior double full glass wood clad. So just that first one right there. Okay, and then when you click open, to load it into your project, Revit is basically saying click on the sizes you want because all of these are available. So if you're working on a laptop that doesn't have a lot of memory, maybe just click on the one that you need or if you're here at school, you can essentially, I just clicked and then dragged down. You can grab all of them and then click OK. And then you have selected many family types. It's just warning you. It's going to take up a lot of memory. It will be fine for this one project. So now in here, do you guys see your preview has changed to the double door? Okay. The one that I would like to use, I want to go ahead and use, um, let's do 84 inch doors. So I want to do the six feet, so the 68 by 84. I'm just going to hang out here for a minute so you can see which one I picked. Okay. And then I'm just going to come here and if you guys take a look at your screen, by default it's going to give you what's called these quick dimensions and it's showing you where it's going in. So if you can, try to center it. And if you move your cursor just slightly, the doors will swing in or they'll swing out. 
So let's have the door swing in, in this case. If you've already put them in, let me show you how to change it. So once the door is in, you can click on the door and that changes the swing. And then this changes the hinge, but since it's a double door, it does nothing. So if it was a single door, we'd actually see that doing something. Okay. Uh, click on it. Do you see these arrows? So the arrows that go up and down change the swing. And then again, these that go side to side are the hinge, but since it's a double door, we won't see any change there. And now we're going to throw in a couple windows. Go ahead. It should be. Oh, I see what you're saying. So, like these right here? Hmm. I don't know. So let's look over here. So take a look at, so I'm, I have mine selected as yours, select yours. Just take a peek at these and make sure that there's not a door offset and that you have thresholds selected. I do have a door offset. Okay, so. You just have to peek in the middle. Yep. Okay. Easy fix. Yeah. Now let's go back. Let's throw in a couple windows here. And just so we all kind of stay the same course, um, let's go to load family again. And here, I'm still in doors. And if I try to lo load a door now, it won't let me because it's like, we're looking for windows, woman. Go find windows. Sarah? Oh, so it might not letting might not be letting you put in because you already have a door there. Yeah. Okay, so hit escape because you're actually still putting in a door. There you go. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we're gonna click on load family again. When in doubt, hit escape. <laughs> okay. So hit escape, Janelle, until it, it isn't, until it just says floor plan. Got it? Okay. So window, load family. And so right now I'm in my residential doors. So what I want to do is click on this little file explorer up here, go back out into US Imperial and find my windows. Okay, do you see where I'm clicking up here? Yep, so keep coming down until you see. You'll see U.S. Imperial, I promise. You're not, uh, you don't need to scroll, so I'm going to hit cancel. Hit cancel for me, too. Okay. Are you canceled out? Click on window again. Load family. Is it back? <laughs> hit escape. Remember, when in doubt, hit escape. So I should do a second yeah. Okay. Yep. Do you see it says residential? Okay. Click on it. And your screen should look just like mine. I know there's lots of scary jargon. Mm -hmm. But two up from residential, it says U.S. Imperial. Okay. Good? And then you can find windows. That's a good menu to get used to because you're going to jump back and forth quite a bit when you're at school and also when you're at home. And I'm going to find, I don't want a skylight. There's lots more windows in 2019. Dang. I mean, cool. I don't know. Um, I'm going to go 
Oh, some of these are terrible. Man. Um, I'm going to pick one just so we can all make them look semi the same. I just don't know. Let's just do in almost not quite the middle. Do you guys see window casement double? Let's just do a window casement double. So I'll hang out here for just a minute while you find it. And then again, you can bring all of the sizes in or just a couple of them. I'm going to click on open. Okay. Yeah. I'll go ahead and grab all of them because I don't know exactly what we're going to use yet. I might have to make this a little bit bigger so I see all of them. Um, yeah. <coughs> okay. And so now if you guys go to window casement double, you'll see that there's a lot more sizes for us to choose from. And let's go ahead and pick the 48 by 72. Let's just start with that. We're going to put this in a couple different ways. So right now you can see it's not telling you exactly how it's centered. So just try as best as you can. Just try to eyeball it so you center it in here and then we'll throw it again in here and then we'll go through how to um, add some dimension to these. So I had to make my menu a little bit bigger. So click on, not click, but drag on your bottom right hand. Yep. And then after you do that, you can keep dragging it out. And you should be able to grab all of them. Good. And I did the 48 by 72, I think. Does that sound right? Okay. 48 by 72. Mm -hmm. Yep, and now what we're going to do, we're actually going to add some precision to it. And um, what I want you guys to do is first, if you click on this door right here, um, you'll see that it's giving us some dimensions. These are just called essentially quick dimensions. Um, but what we want to do is we're going to use dimensions to essentially help us center these windows right here. I'm going to ask you guys, when you click on your windows, do your quick dimensions pop up? I don't have any that pop up with the casement windows. I only have them pop up with the doors. Okay. So what we're going to do, Sorry. yep, 48 by 72. And I'll hang out for a minute while you throw those in so you can kind of align them with us. So let's just chill for a minute. So if you go into your 3D view, you have this little view box up at the top. Do you see where I'm clicking? So I, since we're doing the south window, that would be considered the back. So I just went to look at it from the back. Just toggle through. Let me try it again. Back view. Yep. We haven't done that yet. Just eyeball them in as close as you can, and then we'll do that part together. Janelle, did that work for you, getting your 3D view? Okay. That's okay. As long as, as, long as you see your uh, doors and windows, it's okay. Um, but Okay. So now what we're going to do, we're going to use our... Um, dimension so that DI to measure these windows right here. So if you guys don't mind, you're still really new at this. I'm just going to run through it pretty quickly and then we'll do it together. 
And what I want to do, I want to center the windows on the outside of the building, not on the inside. So if I were looking at it from the outside, I want this window to be dead center. So in this case, when I do DI, remember if I just come and hover, as soon as you see something turn blue, it means it's gonna measure it for you. So I'm gonna drag over and see how it finds the middle of my window. I'm gonna click there, and then I'm gonna find the outside of my door. And then when I'm done, as soon as I see where I want these to go, I can just kind of click in the middle of nowhere and it'll place that for me. Now, do you guys see that a little EQ is up here? If I click on that, it'll make the dimensions equal. So when I click on that, it makes them equal and then I know that it's centered. So since I know you all were pa waiting patiently and not clicking anything, ding, ding, buzz, buzz, <laughs> let's do it all together. So the shortcut for it, let's see, where did we end last time? Janelle, I'm gonna start with you. What's the shortcut to throw in a dimension string? DI. Good, it's just DI, no enter. And then, let's see, um, you start with a B, but I don't remember, are, you're not Brit and you're not Brienne. You are, give me another hint. I did, Brit, oh dang it, sorry Brit. Okay, how do I start measuring stuff here? Yeah, so just kind of, you can click right on it. Just know that as soon as you see the blue, it's ready to go. Yep. And then we find our center, right? And we find our end. And then Pamela, I've got these dimensions here. Do I hit escape? Do I hit enter? What on earth do I do? I'm freaking out. It's not there yet. We'll come back to that. Lexi, do you know how I end this misery? I'm like, whoops, I, I already ended it. Yep, you just click in the middle of nowhere. Okay. Yep, as, so as long as you don't have anything highlighted, Rev is just like, okay, okay, this person is done. And when you're done, Pamela, do you see what you're looking for now? For the yep, there's our EQ. So we click on it, and it just nudged it over a little bit, but it may have, you know, everybody put these in differently. So what I'd like you guys to do, go ahead and do it on your own for this side of the, for this side of the door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so hit escape. You might be stuck in something else. Like I said, good rule of thumb is always to hit escape. And then DI. I'm gonna pause. And you, okay, so I hit record. Let me come over to this other side. And on this side right here, I'm not gonna do an equal, but first I'm just gonna put down a dimension line. And sometimes this happens where you do it to the inside, but you meant to go to the outside. So what you can do is one of these, if you just click on them, mean, it should actually just bounce around between all of your different set points, but this one is not. Okay, no it did, sorry. So it's this middle one right here. If you click on it, it'll go through, and it took mine a minute to get there, but do you see how it's toggling back and forth between all of the different types of dimensions that I could align to on this wall? So it's going from exterior face to center to interior face. So you don't have to really drag anything. You can just kind of click around. What was that? You got it finally? Yeah. So you have to click once to activate it and then click again to start kind of moving it around. Um, and then if you also wanted to, like for example, this one is, this one right here went to the center of the window. And let's say I don't want to go to the center of the window anymore. So again, I'm going to click to activate it and then I see this guy right here and you'll even see when I hover it says move witness line 
So now I'm clicking and dragging and I can bring it all the way out here. And if you want to go back, just click and drag it back over. So now with this, or with any of these, um, what I want to do, pick any wall, because I know most of us are at the top, some of us at the bottom, but let's say that I wanted to put in a side door over here that's four feet from the corner right here. So first, let's put in that door. And this definitely isn't equaled. And we're just gonna do one of our single flush doors. So I clicked, on, I went to architecture, I went to door, and then single flush 36 by 84. And again, first we're just gonna eyeball it. That's one thing that you might have a hard time getting used to after you have all these commands that help you exactly line stuff up. But first you're just gonna throw it in. We're gonna do it four feet, but first just get in the door for me. And then once you have the door in there, or any corner, I'm gonna show you guys a couple things. So actually even before, I should have shown you this first. This isn't that big of a deal. But since our first door was a double door, you can't see that right now, when I hit the space bar, it changes the hinge. And then when I just barely move my mouse, I can have it swing to the inside or outside, or again, space bar changes the hinge. I just forgot because when I was first showing it to you again, you couldn't see it. So again, I'm just gonna eyeball it and throw it in there. And by default, do you guys see that we always have these like quick dimensions here for us? So these aren't dimensions that actually exist. They're just here to kind of help us out. So what I want to do now, I have to hit escape because even though those dimensions are there, Revit is waiting for me to draw more doors, but I don't wanna put in more doors. So I hit escape to get out of there. And then go ahead and click on your door. And all of us are gonna have a different dimension here. Now, even though mine says four feet, is this even the four feet that I want to be measuring right now? No. So I'm gonna grab this witness right here I'm gonna to try to move it to the outside. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab this witness line here and I'm gonna move it right there. Lindsay, right? Hi. Let me. Okay, so click on the little blue dot to see if that does anything else for you. And the other thing you have to do, so see when I'm moving it and I let go, it doesn't really do anything. I have to click the little blue dot and then wait until the wall or something highlights for me to drop it onto. Did that help at all? Got it? Okay, and I'm gonna, I can do this one more time just in case if it didn't work for you the first time so my screen looks somewhat like your screen again. This is the default view. But right now, can I edit my witness lines? Oh, I guess I can. Thanks, Revit. Usually when the X is, you, so this is a new thing. In the past, I'd have to finish putting in my doors before I could edit my witness lines, but that's not the case. So we like learning new shortcuts. Let me back up and do it one more time. <laughs> so I'm putting in my door. I've got my witness lines. This seems so counterintuitive to me, even though it says this big do not sign. What this symbol is for right now is Revit is telling me you can't put a door here, silly. There's no wall to host it. So I have to have a wall in order for this door to be hosted. Again, tangent, that's not what we're talking about right now. <laughs> Just so you know, that's what that sign is for. So again, I've got my door, I put it in, here are my quick dimensions, and even just in here, if I click around, eventually it finds the edge of the door, and then it did find the edge of this door too. Now, let's, I'm gonna back it up. If you didn't want it like this, maybe you wanted it over here. Again, the key is to grab this little blue dot, 
And if you click around, if you just click on it, it should eventually go to one part of your door. But you could also click and drag until it highlights if you don't want to do all that clicking. Either way. Do you guys remember what dimension I wanted here? Yep. So for enter, it scooches it for you and there's your four foot door. No, not four foot centered, just from this corner to the edge of my door, four feet. <laughs> uh, which part? Do you have four feet, right, or do you have a dimension that goes from your wall to the edge of your door? That would be the first place to start. Okay. Okay. So what you can do, you can click on that number, and it should automatically be highlighted. And so once it's highlighted, you can just type in the new number. Let me change this to six and then enter. And it scooches it six feet away. No? Oh, maybe. Yeah, so over here I have 26 feet. Now, Janelle, it all depends on where you put the door. So I went from this corner right here. All I'm asking is that you put a door somewhere four feet away from the corner. Maybe? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll see what's going on there. Um, for the rest of you, what I'd like you to do, um, put in at least one more door somewhere else and then maybe a couple more windows. And then when you go to your second level, try to see if you can move some stuff to align it so that things are kind of right on top of each other. Okay, let me pause. Anyway, what I wanted to say is just thank you for hanging in there with me. I'll remind me every once in a while if you guys need to take a break. I'll, I try to remember because this is a particularly long class since it is summer semester. Um, but coming back to here, so these were, again, just some of the basics that we went through. So we did, uh, we put in some walls, we put in some windows, we put in some doors. I did tell you guys to hop into the second level to try to align some stuff. And the reason why I wanted to bring that up is that when I click on the second level, do you guys see that my windows and doors on the level below are ghosted in there? Okay. So that makes it really nice so you can try to align things. Now let me ask you this. Why do you think that these doors and windows are ghosted, but the wall is there when we haven't even drawn anything yet? Why do you think that would be the case? It's not just lining up, but let me go to my 3D view here. So when we set up this model and we drew our first floor walls, we told Revit that these first floor walls go all the way up to the roof. So when I'm on my second level and I select this wall here, it's the same wall that's connecting down into my first level. So when I delete this, it's also gone on my first level. Okay, so again, this BIM model, everything connects. Last semester I felt so bad, one of my students on like the third or fourth class drew her first level went to her second level, drew her third level, and well, you see what I'm saying, she just drew all, like the walls are supposed to continue all the way up, she kept drawing on every level. But you don't need to do that. Essentially you draw it once, and since the whole thing connects, you will see it appear on every level. Now again, the things that are ghosted out, those are just there for a preview. There will be times when you guys want to print your plan, and you don't want to see these items here. So right now when we're working in our model, it's nice to see them so we can line up. But if you were to give this to your client, they might be confused. Like, well, what are these really light windows and doors doing here? Are they supposed to be there? So you can change that in your settings by going to properties. And if you scroll down, do you see something called underlay? It's almost exactly in the middle of that menu. It's called underlay. So when you get here, you'll see that your base level is main, but if I change that to none, it just turns it off so I don't see the preview of the main level. So I just ask that when you print other levels to turn off the levels below so I know exactly what I'm looking at. So again, this is under properties, underlay, and under range base level, 
it can be on none or it could be main level. So you see what's on underneath. <coughs> For now, let's go ahead and keep it on. Okay. Everybody feel okay about that? I have a question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you don't see walls in your second level. Are they ghosted or anything like that? Okay, so on your view properties, um, like for example, if you go to your, come to your east elevation for me. Okay, do you see your walls going up all the way through a main second and roof? Yeah? Okay, let's go back to second level, right? Do you see anything? If it's just a plain white screen, try to do the double click zoom all for me. See if that does it. So just a quick note for everybody out there. Um, usually on the first day of class, I don't show you guys how to do a split screen because it can be a little bit confusing, like as cool as it is, it can be confusing. Just make sure that as you're going through, just close out the stuff you're not using so you don't get too lost. It's okay to get a little lost, but not too lost. Um, what I want to do here now is let's draw um, let's actually go to our main level. So I'm okay having these two stacked. So when I'm in my second level, if I open my main level, these two are just on top of one another in this view. So I can still easily toggle back and forth. What we're going to do now is I'm going to draw some demising walls because it's not just going to be a big giant space. And so um, to throw those in, good, I am recording, I'm going to go again main level. Let's get a wall, and for this particular wall, let's go all the way down to our interior walls, and let's just do the interior four and seven eighths inch wall. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is gonna be a little bit different. Everybody find that wall okay? Okay, so for this one, I want it in the dead center of the house. So what would be one thing that I would change there? It would be the location line because I want it dead center. So just make sure your location line is wall center. Okay. And then the other thing for this wall, I actually just want it to go up to the second level because I'm, I'm going to be on the inside of my building. So hopefully you'll see in my little 3D preview over here, when I start drawing it, it's not gonna go all the way up, but it's gonna go up to just my, um, just almost to the middle of the building. So if you haven't taken AutoCAD before, this might take you a minute to get used to, but there's these things called snaps. So when you see this triangle hi highlighting over here, that means you found the midpoint of your wall. And as soon as you click on that, you can just drag over until you find your other end, and then go ahead and hit Escape to stop drawing. So we're gonna do one wall dead center here. And then I'm gonna do another dead center wall here. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you guessed it, right here as well. So we're just kind of chopping up that space. Then once you get those done, if you wouldn't mind, let's put in dimension strings to the centers, to our wall center lines for these walls right here. Mm -hmm. Yep, so I started off on the inside right here. And then these are center, center. This one, 
I'm gonna switch to the interior as well. Oh, so if you go to DI, over here, do you see it says wall center line? Yeah. You can do it there. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you can toggle back and forth. And here's, if you didn't want to change it, let me go back to wall faces. I can click this wall face. And then see over here how it finds my wall face. If I just really take my time, it's pretty forgiving. It's like, okay, do you want this one? But the first one, it'll always pick the face for you. Okay, so here's what's going to happen now. Our owner got back to us and said that this front room area, whatever it is, 15 feet is great, but these two rooms need to be a minimum of 10 feet each. So what we can do, what, if I, do I even need to tell you what to do? Would you guys be able to figure out how to move those walls so this is a 10 foot room and that's a 10 foot room? Take like 30 seconds to try it. And then I'll show ya. It's a little bit tricky at first. Lindsay? Like that? So in Revit, I think most people would want to click the dimension line and try to change it. But remember, we're trying to move the wall. So what you would do is you'd click on the wall and see how that activates the dimension? So again, it looks like this by default, but when I click on the wall, then Revit's like, oh, do you wanna change this? So I can come here, click on this dimension, 10 feet. Come here, click on this wall, and make that 10 feet. You guys want me to run through that one more time? Okay, so this is approximately where we were. <coughs> wall center lines. And then again, our client said that they want these rooms to be about 10 feet. I'm not saying exactly, about 10 feet. So first, click on the first wall you want to move. Because remember, you're not moving the dimension, you're moving the wall. So first click on the wall, and then the dimension will activate at that point. So we can do 10 feet here. And then I click on this wall, and we can do 10 feet here. The other thing that you can do, without dimensions even being in there, click on this middle wall for me, and do you see how our quick dimensions pop up? Okay, so let's say right now it is going center to center. Click on these dots for me, edit the witness lines until we're back to our interior faces. So the interior face of this room right here. Now, if we all have roughly the same dimensions and wall types and center lines, your dimension for at least this part should be exactly like mine. Do you guys have about 14 foot 9 and 9 16? Something like that? Okay. No, let's say on this dimension here, they want it to be 15. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Let me ask you, so I'll, I'll say this again. You want to move the wall, not the dimension. So click on the wall that you want to move. Ta-da! There you go. Yep. Uh huh. So that I just think that's a good way of remembering it. You want to move the wall. So click on the wall first, and then you can tell it where to go. So from here, let's make this an exact 15 feet, and it should scooch over. So. Again, hit escape for me. I'm gonna say the keyword again. Click on the wall you want to move and not the dimension you want to move. So click on the wall and see how these immediately graphically change. They get smaller and they get activated. Those are the dimensions you're looking for so you can click on them and change the size. Now I don't necessarily want 15 feet up there. <coughs> And Sarah, what you might find is when you are dimensioning, you may not have even dimensioned to this wall. So what you can do, I'm gonna delete these. 
So if you if it makes it easier, you can delete your dimension strings because it's too hard to kind of drag them into the right place. Good. So now let's just start with maybe this wall down here. So when you click on it, these quick dimensions should pop up. So if you don't want to put dimensions back in, let's just take these. Um, the way that I did mine, it was the finish face and then the center face. Okay. And then from there, if you just click over here, yours is on the right side, not the left. Sorry, Sarah, do you see over here yours is on the left? Is that the left? Sorry, yours is on the right. Oh. Yeah. Pretty good. Take a look at my 3D model. Do you see that those walls are actually staying on that first floor and not going up to the second floor? But if, let's say that there's a wall that you do want to go all the way up for plumbing reasons or maybe there's like a fireplace, you could always grab that one particular wall, like I have this one right here, and again, look under your properties, and I'm going to take it from the top constraint, not up to the second level, but up to the roof. Sometimes there's walls that um, where your stairs align to that need to go all the way up. So there are some walls that are interior that do go all the way up. What is the error message? That should be okay. Oh. It's because you're running into a window. I think it's just warning you. Okay. Um, now that we have some walls on the first floor, let's hop back up to our second level. And if you have your base underlay turned on, again, this could be helpful if you do want to align some walls or make some of the rooms similar especially in commercial spaces. Um, like if you have to do a mechanical closet or electrical closet on the same spot in every floor because the cables run up and down, this is a great way of doing it. Residential, we have a little bit more flexibility, but again, you can use these walls right here to essentially trace over. So if I go to wall right now, I can essentially, let me get finished face interior. I can just come through Oh, see right here when I go to draw my wall, how it's essentially the opposite of where I want it to go? Similar to our door, if I hit spacebar, it flips what side of the line it's drawing on. So a lot of repeating concepts when you're working in Revit. It's doing it again right here, so if I just hit spacebar, it swings it over to the other side. And I don't know why I did that. I just copied the exact same second floor as my main floor, which really doesn't make any sense. But it was just a, an example of how to copy. I'm going to delete this wall right here. And then... I want to make this a perfect corner right here. And so if you go, you can see some of these shortcuts here. So if you're familiar with AutoCAD, there's a fillet command that brings corners together. It's known as the TR command here, the trimmer extends to corner. So if I type in TR, you keep, you click on the walls you want to keep. So I click this wall and then I click over here and it trims off the excess. Let me show you one more time. My wall ended up like this. Okay. So if you type in TR enter, again, keep the two walls you want to keep. So I want to keep this portion and this portion. So it automatically deletes that part up here. Uh -huh. um, so are you on your first floor? Yeah. 
Let me hop down there. So this one is the 10, right? Okay, so here's what I would do. So click 10 here first, just get one of them to 10. Okay. And then once that one's there, click on your second one. Yep. And then you should see another dimension out here. Try to change that one to 10. And if it moves the other one, you can just put in a dimension string. And then since it's running into a window, it gives you a warning, but it looks like it's working other than running into a window. There you go. Good. All right. Um, so looking down on my model right here, what am I obviously missing here? A floor. Yeah. <laughs> So um, we need to put in a floor in the second level and this is just kind of bonus stuff with just a few minutes we have left. Why don't you guys take a look at your screen and try to figure out how to put in a floor. It's going to be different than anything we've done before so it won't really be familiar. So it's going to be really you guys experimenting on clicking buttons. But take a couple minutes to try. And then I'll show you the step-by-step -step process. Um, just so you know, the reason why I like you guys to kind of explore on your own, I think a lot of times when we start a new program, we're somewhat intimidated to like do the wrong thing or press the wrong button, but I don't want you guys to be scared. Click on stuff and just know that you can always do control Z or hit escape a whole bunch of times until you're ready. Is somebody whispering Nina? No? Okay. Sarah, are you trying? <laughs> You're lost? Where did I lose you guys? So your walls still look right to me. So good. So on my second level, it's not showing. So I have a door down here and then a door right there. Uh huh. It's not showing on the second level. Weird. So. It might have to do with your cut line, which is something a little bit different. So this door right here was a pretty tall door. I think I had that door, I don't even know how tall I had it, but I had it pretty tall. So do this for me. Um, and this might be something everybody wants to take a peek at. Actually, no, let me see over here. Do you guys see how <coughs> on my main level, I have a door here and I have a door here. But when I go to my second level, I see this door, but not that door. So this is going to go back to kind of like basic drafting things where when we work on a floor plan, it cuts it at a certain point and we see everything below. So usually that cut point is set at like four or five feet and then everything below it shows up. So what I want to check right here is when we went to our um, underlay right here, we had the second level on, but the thing that I think is missing is that the view range, so this is getting a little bit ahead, but let me kind of explain to you. So the view range, if you click on edit, so view range is in the next category below underlay. Okay. And I'm going to scooch this over to the side so we can kind of try and preview it. But, <coughs> so on the top level, we have our offset at seven and a half feet, which is pretty tall. I'm gonna see, um, bottom offset is zero. One of these numbers should fix it, but I don't know which one. So you guys are just gonna stand at, uh, let me hit apply. Wasn't that one. I might even have to do this on the floor below. So let me see it here. Let's take this to three. Yep, I'm gonna hit. Okay, so 
So right now, sorry, I'm gonna have to do this math in my head real quick because this door is obviously higher than that door, but it gets cut off. So I want this guy right here, which might be five. It doesn't show me there. Mm -hmm. Don't want it like that. Sorry, Sarah. I'll figure out which one it is eventually. <laughs> Okay, since we're so close to the end, do you mind if I actually, I'm gonna not do this one right now, but when we come back next week, we'll look at the cut planes, cause I'm afraid while I'm trying to figure it out, I'm gonna change a system setting. I think I have to go to the floor below, but essentially I hope what's happening makes sense. So remember at a floor plan, we pick a certain height and everything below that we see. What's happening here is on this main level because this door is shorter than this door. Like this one's 84. Um, you know, they're both at 84 now. Mm, 84 and 84. Yeah, no, they are both at the same height. So I thought that this was at a standard height. I'm gonna have to see why this guy, so I see the hole for the door, but I don't actually see the doors coming in. I don't know if that's a graphic setting one thing that I will try, but I don't think it'll change it. I'm going to see if I change these to swing out, if it changes anything. Mm -mm. No. Okay. I'll play with that one to see how we can get both of those to pop up because they should still ghost in for you so you can see that. Um, <coughs> do you guys mind? I'm going to hop back in to my original question for you, which was the floor. Did anybody have any luck? It's kind of weird, right? So this will be a whole new concept. And this next concept, so um, walls, windows, and doors all kind of work the same way in the sense that you click them in the architecture menu, you pick what kind, or you load it from the other menu, and you can essentially draw and move stuff around. So that's one way of putting stuff in, the walls, windows, and doors. Now for the next one, we have floors, ceilings, and roofs. Those all kind of work the same way as well. So let me start off with this one. In, in those situations, hit escape because you're stuck in the menu. So maybe go. You're stuck in something. Oh, no, yeah. Here's what trying to do your roof. See how this is highlighted for you? So just try to say, look at me. And then talk that way. There you go. Okay. And I'll show you guys that too. So for this next quick run through, this is gonna give you guys a preview of the stuff we'll start playing with in class next week. Um, so again, <coughs> ceiling, roofs, and floors. So I'm in my second level and I want to place a floor here. So when I click floor, you'll notice that everything grays out and this draw menu should look kind of familiar to you. Remember when we were drawing our walls and we saw all of this stuff pop up? So this means that right now, if I start drawing, it's gonna do this little thingy majiggy, which means it's gonna pick walls. So if I start trying to click on walls, it's going to create a floor based on the walls I'm clicking on. Do you see how when I click a wall, it's kind of making this um, boundary for it? That's what it's doing by default, but I'm gonna make it even simpler. I'm gonna exit out of this. I'm gonna hit this cancel edit mode. I'm gonna discard my floor. I'm gonna hop back into my floor, and this time, what I want to do is when I create my floor, I'm just gonna do a rectangle because this is just a square, so it'd be really easy to go from one corner of my space to the other corner of my space. And this is essentially just telling Revit, this is the perimeter of how I want you to draw my floor. Now right now, if you guys look at my screen, what type of a floor am I about to draw? Yep, generic 12 inch. Does this seem familiar too? So like when we were drawing our walls, if I wanted to do something different, I could come in here, wood joist 10 inches with ceramic tile. There's all these things hit here. I'll do the wood truss joist 
12 inches carpet finish. Okay, you guys know how to change this. And then <coughs> if I hit this green check mark, I'm gonna go ahead and say okay. Now you guys will see in my 3D view, I have a floor that has this pattern on it that shows what the carpet's supposed to look like. Um, now in my second level, again, I'm just gonna run through this real quick because it's just a quick preview. If I wanted to edit my floor, do you see how right now I'm selecting walls but I can't get to my floor? If I do the same technique of hitting tab, so I have all my walls, I hit tab again, and do you see how that time that found my floors? So the key is to go to the edge of your wall and just hit tab until you find it. And then once I find it, eventually we're gonna have to put a stair in here. Right now the bottom and the upper floor is not connected. So to do a stair, I need an opening. Do you guys see anything on my screen that will let me change this? So now that I have it highlighted, tell me what I should click on up here. Yeah, edit boundary. And so I have this square here that shows the boundary of my floor, but I ac could actually come in and draw another opening for my stair, or I could even do a circular opening, or I could do some sort of a polygon if I wanted to. That wasn't a polygon. <coughs> Excuse me. I could come in here and do that. As long as they're all closed shapes, so I could even come into the line and do some crazy opening if I wanted to. Okay, so these are all the holes in my floors. And then as soon as I finish that and say, yep, let's make the, the walls. So come to the, come near a wall. And when you see the wall highlight, start hitting tab and keep hitting tab until it finds your floor. And then you can click and then find where it says edit. So that's what will be coming next. Um, now, I'm sorry, we're getting close to finish time, so we're going to call it quits here. Next week when we come in, we're going to start with the new floor plan. We're going to go through everything from the top, like putting in walls, putting in the doors. But this time we're going to be more specific and a little bit more intricate. So um, this week's assignment will be to do a floor plan that's really similar to this. It's gonna be basically a cube um, with a couple juts in and out. I'm gonna post it um, up on Canvas. I'm actually gonna run home and then post it. So look for it, give me a minute as soon as I get home. The thing that will be a little bit different though, this semester, instead of putting your questions um, in a PDF format, I'm actually gonna have them be on Canvas. So you'll be able to find your questions on Canvas they're going to be listed as a quiz. So don't be scared, it's not a quiz, it's just your questions in a quiz format. Um, and so what I would like to do is I'm gonna go through some of the questions with you guys now so that hopefully when you get home, these will be familiar. So the first thing, when you're looking at your wall location line, what does that indicate? Does it indicate where the wall is drawn on the indication or on the indication line? Or does it tell you like where the wall needs to go? So remember the wall in, so by default when we we're drawing this 30 by 30, what line indicate what wall line indicator did we pick? Interior. What's the default one? Yep, center. So but the default is center, but we more often than not want to use the finish face interior. And remember what that's doing is it's just telling you where Revit is drawing the wall. Okay, so it's that indicator. If you're doing finish face interior exterior, and this is the indicator and your wall's here, and you want to flip it to the other side, what do you hit in Revit to flip it? You hit your space bar and it just kind of uh, flips it from side to side. Okay, let's see. Most of these are pretty apparent. Um, what units does Revit think in? Feet, good, not inches. Um, and then I'll probably ask you about your view windows. So how do you close all of the views that you aren't using? Yep. Yeah. 
so let's hover, let's find out the proper name for it. It should be close in active windows. Okay, so remember that, close in active windows. And if you wanted to set up a dual screen view or a quad screen view or five views at the same time, where would you go to find that? So what menu would you go to first? Good, and then what's the button we're looking for after that? Tile views, good, okay. That's what I'll mostly be looking for. There might be a couple other little things in there. Another big thing I want you guys to remember, if you wanted to create your own unique wall type, would you override a standard? No. Okay, what would you do? Duplicate, good, yep, that's what I'll be looking for as well. Now, I have